Hello, I'm Captain Ronnie Hampton with the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. The video that you're fixing to watch was produced by the students with the Mass Communications Department at the East Central University in Ada. The purpose of the video is to educate you on the collisions that occur on our highways that cause people to be injured and killed. The biggest misconception about traffic collisions is that there's only one collision that occurs. And in reality, there's actually three collisions that occur. In Oklahoma, motor vehicle crashes were the leading cause of unintentional injury death among children and adults from 1 to 64 years of age from 2000 to 2006. Each year, approximately 770 persons lose their lives in traffic-related fatalities. Overall fatality rates were highest among novice drivers 15 to 24 years of age. I was leaving school because I had to go to work and I went over to a friend's house and I had to go back to school to get a book and I went down a dirt road and I was going about 40 down the dirt road and the speed limit's 45. I wasn't wearing my seatbelt and I lost control of the car and I hit a ditch and rolled and then landed. Most people think that the collisions that occur in Oklahoma are a result of two vehicles crashing into each other. And actually that is very far from true. Uh, almost 70% of the collisions that occur in Oklahoma, in rural Oklahoma, are one vehicle collisions. One vehicle collision generally is a product of someone driving down the road. They either get focused on something else inside their car that could be a child, that could be a phone, a text message, that could be adjustment of the radio, anything that distracts their attention just for that moment in time to where their vehicle travels a few feet off the roadway. They feel their tires leave the road, they pull their steering wheel, causes the car to begin to rotate around its center of mass, is traveling out of control. The end results every time in those collisions is the car either strikes a tree, a bridge, a fence, or it begins to overturn. And when that occurs, there's no time to put your seatbelt on. All I remember was hitting the ditch, and I remember hitting my head off the steering wheel. I remember it landing, and I was halfway out of the passenger side window on the road, so I crawled up, and I tried calling 911, but I didn't have any signal and then I tried to scream for help then I pretty much just laid my head down on my arm and waited. A lot of times you'll hear people say but I'm a safe driver but what people have to understand is sometimes it's the other driver it can be the other driver's impairment it can be the other driver's reckless behavior or it can just be the other driver's inattention that makes them do something in front of you and if that occurs within 1.6 seconds, you're not going to be able to steer. You're not going to be able to brake. You're not going to be able to do anything but undergo those collision forces. And at that point, you have to hope that you have your safety belt on because it is the only thing that's going to protect you and reduce injury and prevent death. Wearing a seatbelt reduces the risk of dying from crash injuries by 65%. It takes less than five seconds to properly buckle up. Make sure that your buckle is secured. Adjust the lap belt across your hips below your stomach. Place the shoulder belt across the middle of your chest and away from your neck. Never put the shoulder belt behind your back or under your arm. It's simple, it's easy, and most importantly, it's safe. When a car gets involved in a collision, the things that we examine are the delta V of the collision. We want to know what type of collision forces took effect on the people inside that car. That tells us a lot about what type of injuries they may have, and it also explains why one person may live in a crash and one person may die in a crash. Delta V can be computed when we know the approaching speed of a vehicle at the moment it impacts an object and we know the speed it departs the collision. 
Take the example of a car driving down a highway at 65 miles per hour. A car in front of it is braking and the first car strikes the second. After striking, the car continues to move forward at 45 miles per hour. The Delta V, due to the impact with the car, was 20 miles per hour. The person in the car will continue to move forward at 20 miles per hour inside the vehicle. Then the occupant strikes the interior of the car. This is the second impact of a motor vehicle accident, where injury really begins to take place. After the person's head strikes the interior, the brain also moves forward, striking the inside of the skull. This is a third impact, causing serious injury, permanent brain damage, or even death. I had ripped my spleen completely out of place to where I was bleeding internally. I broke my pelvis in five different places. I broke my left leg. I, to put it in an ice way, I cut myself in half almost. Uh, I have multiple wo uh, cuts and wounds on me. Um, I had a body temperature of 20 something degrees when they found me and I had to have 47 units of blood. They pretty much at the hospital they called me their miracle child because I wasn't supposed to walk away from that. They didn't expect me to make it through the night. and. If I would have been wearing my seatbelt, I probably wouldn't have had that problem. Actually, I can guarantee I wouldn't have that problem. The brain is encased by skull, which protects it from external forces, and it's attached only at the bottom with something called the brain stem, and the, which connects the spinal cord to the brain. So it floats surrounded in cerebrospinal fluid. And what happens is the force of a closed head injury has to be dissipated so that you're going 40, 50 miles an hour and all of a sudden you've stopped. All of the physics and the force of that velocity has to be dissipated somewhere. And it usually happens by the brain hitting the front part of the inside of the skull here and then bouncing back. And this gives you a, two blows that are symmetrical. One at the front and one at the back if someone's facing forward or side to side if, they're, if it's from temple to temple. And we used to think that that was the mechanism by which damage is incurred. That the brain hits and gets smooshed up against the inside of the back of the skull. And then, in 1985, we got MRIs for the first time and we recognized that's probably not the major mechanism of damage. While the blow and counter blow, called a coup, contra coup, occurs, more important is the twisting and the brain twists on its axis and as it twists it shears all of the connections from the brain to the brain stem and in the brain stem are functions like respiration, heart rate, being able to stay awake and it's that shear that produces the coma and the resulting damage and we used to think back in the day that you began healing right then and there. We then recognized that a closed head injury produces a cascade of events, that the brain damage continues for 24 hours after the original insult. So you can see how critically important knowing and being able to reduce the delta V that the body undergoes. And that's what supplemental restraints such as airbags and seat belts and the combination of both begin to do. The sad truth is the majority of the people that we see critically injured in car crashes and the people that we see that never go home after a car crash that are killed is because of the lack of seatbelt use. The most serious is of course that most people think of is death but there are things worse than death. At the surface of the brain the brain is wired sensory to motor to personality. So if the, if the majority of the damage occurs back in the back part of the brain or the posterior brain, we anticipate problems with vision and sensation. More forward, we have problems with weakness. And even more forward, personality, we see people change in personality after that. So there can be problems with attention and concentration. At the mildest form, the mildest form of a brain injury is called a concussion 
and you don't even have to be knocked completely out in order to have a concussion. And the things that people complain about after a concussion are headache pain, restlessness and insomnia, and problems with attention and concentration. And I've had people trapped in comas for decades. They lose all of those possibilities of their life with that one moment. And one of the most frustrating things that occurs for people with more severe brain injuries, they don't recall the injury itself. All of the memories that are going on are, don't have time to be placed into the long-term memory bank in our brain, the temporal lobes. So those memories get knocked out. So if someone wakes up and they may have lost three to five days, or I've had patients that have lost years and they don't recall what happened to them. All they know is that they're different now. I almost lost my life at 17 years old and I don't want to have to see some other family go through what mine had to. Many times when we contact motorists on the roadside uh, for an enforcement stop for them not wearing their safety belt, um, many times the, the argument that they'll make inside the car is that that is a personal preference, that it's not hurting anyone other than them. And that just simply isn't true. Uh, although it is their choice whether they put the seat belt on, Oklahoma law requires anyone in the front seat to have their safety belt buckled. But when they say that it doesn't affect anyone else, they don't see the tragic outcome of a fatal collision. When someone is has their life taken away when they're just simply trying to drive a few miles uh, from their house to the store and that unforeseen collision occurs and they're not wearing their seat belt because they're that close to town and they end up getting killed. Uh, too many times in Oklahoma we have to go out, we have to make those death notifications and tell someone that their, their loved one's never coming home again. So to say that it doesn't affect anyone else isn't true because we see the outcome. We see the grief that families deal with in the years following someone's simple decision not to put their seatbelt on. Okay. 